In this video, I'm gonna show you my six week front lever transformation by doing grease the groove. Right now, I'm gonna show you the results, the hidden moments, and the most valuable lessons I learned from greasing the groove, the front lever. Let's get started. So today I will start to work on the front lever and now I'm gonna see what's my current level of strength if I could do the variation of advanced stack, the frog variation or straddle. We will see. Well, so the results are that I can do the frog variation for almost eight seconds. And well, my form is not the best. My arms are straight, which is good, but my body is not 100% straight, especially at the end after like four or five seconds. Today is the first day I start the Grease the Group protocol and I'm a little bit scared because I think I'm gonna burn out. So normally when you grease the groove, you remove all the similar exercise from your routine. For example, if you grease the groove, the pull up, you remove all the other pulling exercise from your routine. And this time I'm greasing the groove, the front lever, but I'm still doing pull ups, rows and bicep pulls. And actually I did that workout yesterday and I feel pretty sore, but it's okay. I will try to see how it goes and we will see. So because in the test I did 8 seconds, I should be doing now at least 5 seconds, which is a 60%, but this time I did just 3 seconds. So I should improve that. And the good thing is I still have 5 times more, a total of 6, this day to complete. This is the last day of the first week and if I have to be honest, I'm very happy with the results. I think that I have already mastered the frog front lever. Maybe it's too early, but to know it, I will just test today in the last set. That's the first set, so at the end of the day, I will test the straddle front lever or at the pike straddle front lever. And if I can do it, I will move to that variation the next week. I just completed 10 seconds of the pike straddle front lever and this means that next week I will be greasing the groove this exercise for 5 seconds or a little bit more. Today I started the second week greasing the groove and it feels much less overwhelming. I think I'm getting used to it and especially what, was, what has helped me is this deep bar. Let me show you. Because you know it's very portable, you can have it in your room, you can put it in your car and, and you know it's very convenient. And, but it's a little bit tricky, it's not the same doing the front lever here than a, a, in a regular pull-up bar. I think that here you have to be more conscious about being stable and not turning off the deep bar. This is the last day of the second week, greasing the groove, the front lever. And I've been doing all this week the pike straddle front lever, and it's been good enough, but I didn't like that I was feeling a strong, painful stretch in my left lat when finishing each set. And that's what stops me from trying the normal straddle front lever, but I'm gonna give it a shot right now anyway.
so after this test, my pain really increased. I pushed it too hard. And you know, I was a little bit depressed because I thought about really stopping the the groove and you know, uh, waiting maybe for a month or two until I know for sure that this pain is nothing to continue. But finally, I decided to just continue doing it, but I will lower a progression and do again the frog variation to take it more chill and make sure that I stay injury free. To warm up, I follow these three steps. The first step is to do this easy but super compound exercise like burpees or air squats because they will raise you your blood temperature, your blood flow and your heart rate. The second step is to do some of the movement patterns that you will find in the front lever to start preparing the joints for the movement. These movement patterns are basically shoulder extension, and also shoulder retraction or scapular retraction, which is moving your scapula or shoulder blades back and together. And you can do that with a deep bar, but also with rings or elastic band. And the third step is to start already doing the front lever, but with an exercise that's too easy for you so that you don't get your muscles fatigued, but you are already priming your nervous system to get the most out of your grease the groove set. So when you do these three steps, you are ready to do the front lever without injuries. This is the end of the week five, and I've been sticking to the frog pose. It's maybe too easy for me, but you know, you want to make sure that I do it pain-free. And yeah, it was like that. I only noticed pain, not in the front lever, in the front lever maximum just one to 10, when I was doing l sits and more like v sits Today is the last day I'm increasing the groove and I'll be doing again the pike straddle progression and at the end of the day, my last set, I will max out to see all the progress. So I'm very happy because after doing again the pike straddle front lever, I did it without paint and also it wasn't hard at all. So I could almost do the straddle front lever. I think I was like 30 degree away, which leads me to some more work to do. But hey, I think that for six weeks, it's pretty awesome that I have gone from a frog pose, like struggling to do a frog pose, to almost doing a straddle. And keep watching because now I will share with you the most important lessons that I wish I knew before starting this Grease the Groove process. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to this channel for more videos like that. And check out the end of the video because I will link two videos that I think that you will find very interesting. One are the detailed instructions for doing the Grease the Groove and the other one is a six month handstand transformation. To finish up the video, I will tell you the three most important things I learned this time by greasing the groove. The first thing is that you have to always warm up. I know that greasing the groove maybe just five to 10 seconds every time you do it, but that's not an excuse to not warm up. The second thing I learned is that being consistent, it's not the hardest thing. The hardest thing is to don't do too much. Remember to do 60 to 70% of your intensity maximum. And the third and final thing, which is what I think that has contributed the most to my back pain, is that you shouldn't be maxing out or testing every week. I know it's cool to know every week what, what is your max, but I would recommend you to just test or max out once at the end of the program. I hope that you find some value from these lessons and this transformation and see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.